that the reason why one can't stay too long at Elbaf is because it has something to do with the passage of time itself. We've been given a very ominous warning about Elbaf and it's time for us to get to the bottom of it. So take out your copies of Bragman. We are reading deep, deep into the warning of Mr. Louis Arnott. So in chapter 1132, we are given our first proper look into the vast and magical landscape of Elbaf, or at least what seems to be the main part of Elbaf or the main part of Warland Elbaf, which seems to be the Sun Realm where most of the giants actually live. Now, firstly, it would be criminal of me if I did not give my props to say a huge congratulations and a thank you to Oda because the Warland of Elbaf is really a beautiful, beautiful kingdom. Oda truly outdid himself and I think it might be the first time that I was brought to tears just by looking at a fictional landscape. But this double panel really did take my breath away. I mean, one look at this fabled island and you know that it just promises adventure with its fantastical rain rainbow, its grand castle, and the mystical waterfalls. I'm sure you'll agree with me when I say that I felt just as excited as Luffy and Usopp ready to start exploring the vast, vast island. And yet, as we're teeming with this adventurous spirit, as we're getting ready to lose ourselves in the mysticism and the grandeur of this magical isle, we're warned that we actually should not allow ourselves to get carried away, for according to Louis are not. One should not stay in Elba for too long. And before we get into speculation mode as to why this may be the case, let me just also take a minute to say that this has to be one of the best introductions to a new island. I know we've all been really hyped for Elba. We've all had really high expectations. This is an island that we've been waiting for for decades, for even longer than we anticipated Wano. And at least for me, this intro not only lived up to my expectations, but surpassed it. Alongside a really visual, breathtaking experience that stops you in your tracks, Oda's also managed to instill a greater sense of excitement by sprinkling in some tension, teasing a new mystery, tantalizing us with a brush of danger. Well, Oda-san, good sir, hook, line, and sinker, I am officially intrigued, so let's get into this mystery. So Louis Arnott, an explorer whose journals have been published alongside others in Bragman, he is reintroduced in chapter 1132, and Arnott warns us that although Elbaf is indeed a magical and stunning island with much to admire and explore, and though his fellow adventurers should not regret their time spent here, they also shouldn't overstay their welcome. And of course, this starts tickling the speculating neurons of my brain to start wondering what this means. Why? Why can't we stay on this gigantuan island? What happens if you stay too long? And how do we even begin to quantify how long is too long? And I think in trying to resolve these questions, the first figure we should look to or the first place we should look to is Mother Carmel. Mother Carmel is a clear example of a non-Elbafian who has or did reside in the Island of Giants for a very long time. We know that by the time that Charlotte Linlin joins her at the House of Lambs, Mother Carmel has been operating out of Elbaf for 37 years. And although Arnott's words are pretty vague and he doesn't specify how long is too long, I would say that 37 years is much longer than what he's talking about. At the end of the day, Oda wouldn't include this sort of warning if it wasn't to provide some sort of time pressure. And if you're allowed to stay on the island for up to 37 years, that would render this threat pretty meaningless. So I guess in that way, Mother Carmel and her orphans, as people who have either overcome whatever dangers arise when you overstay your welcome, or they too are actually victims victims of the unfortunate threat of the island, and we've just never realized it, they serve as really good figures, as really good characters, as test subjects for us to test different theories against. And this way we can easily rule out some of the ideas. For example, one of the first speculations I came across was that what would happen when you stay on this island for too long is that you too would become of a gigantuous size. And I guess when you look at Mother Carmel, you could pretty easily rule that out out because Mother Carmel, despite having spent, again, 37 years on Elbaf, never grew to become giant size. And neither did any of the orphans, or as far as we know. And obviously, Lin Lin doesn't count because she was already of a very large size. Or similarly, another idea that I saw floating around was that you don't want to stay on this island too long because if you do, you'll become too attracted to it to the point that you never want to leave. 
And of course, this could be a problem because there are other things that could be occurring outside of the world, things that require your attention. But you may be too preoccupied with your adventures at Elbaf, meaning that you would miss life life that occurs outside of the island. But speaking of things requiring your attention, let me introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, Raycon. Raycon's everyday earbuds are good for your ears, your eyes, and your wallets. These affordable earbuds are packed with loads of features, from active noise cancelling to a wide range of touch controls. I love that I have so much control without having to open up my phone or the computer. It's so convenient. And these earbuds and the protective case are so much fun. I mean, look at how colorful and bright these designs are. I chose black for the everyday earbuds, but but they offer such a huge range. I got the everyday protective case in this lovely sunset design. Look how pretty that is. And even more exciting, it's dustproof and water resistant. I have to say what I love most are the fit of these earbuds. I often have trouble keeping earphones in, but these ergonomic bad boys fit so damn well. They're especially designed to suit a wide range of ears. Look, I can even do the Nika dance. They also last a really long time with 32 hours of battery life. Or if you're in a hurry, even just a quick 10 minutes of charging time will give you up to an hour and a half of playing time. And I don't think you need any more convincing, but here's one more thing. If you're not satisfied with your product, Raycon offers a 30-day happiness guarantee with free returns. And if you click my link below, you can also get discounts on the best-selling Raycon products. So use my link below for 20% off. What are you waiting for? Grab your very own Raycon everyday earbuds or the everyday protective case. And a big thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this video. But let's again use Mother Carmel to try test this theory out. Because again, I would say that this idea doesn't quite work because we've seen that Mother Carmel really had no qualms about leaving Elbaf. If you take a look at chapter 860, 67. It's quite clear that when she was faced with the choice of either remaining at Elbaf and discarding Lin Lin, or prioritizing Lin Lin after she accidentally caused the death of the hero Yurul, Carmel chose to leave behind the island to move the House of Lambs elsewhere because she knew that Lin Lin would be the prize recruit for the world government and this would be her ticket out of the business. This would essentially secure her retirement fund. Meaning that when she was faced with this dilemma, Carmel really saw no problem leaving. You know, she wasn't afflicted with any disease or this Elbafian curse that forces you to stay on this island, makes you never want to leave. So I guess in that sense, that leads us all the way back to square one. But here's something interesting. I actually think that the key to figuring out this mystery, the mystery of what happens when you stay at Elbaf too long, has actually been very cleverly hidden as part of the problem itself. And that key is time. Time itself is the danger. Like I said, I think it's clear that Oda has introduced this threat to cause some sort of time pressure. Actually, on a funny side note, on a little bit more of a meta note, I've seen comments that this is actually Oda's way of setting some time pressure for himself, especially after a mammoth arc at Wano and then Egghead Island also being quite lengthy itself. Maybe Oda is actually warning himself not to get too carried away, making sure he stays on track and gets the story finished. But I think in all seriousness, having some sort of race against the clock is a classic trope that we see time and time again in One Piece. And I'd have to say that this is actually quite a refreshing way to introduce the problem in the arc, especially because I'm not 100% convinced that we're going to get a major antagonist in the arc. You know, what with the way that Loki has been set up, it could actually be the case that this ticking clock time trope, this could be what causes the bulk of the tension or the conflict. Or at least the major part. But as an additional layer, when it comes to the mystery itself, I think it's possible, even likely, that the reason why one can't stay too long at Elbaf is because it has something to do with the passage of time itself. So when I first started thinking about this concept, I was first immediately drawn to a more complex idea, something along the lines of time being cyclical in Elbaf. You know, the idea that time is non-linear, especially because according to more modern interpretations of Norse mythology, there seems to be a somewhat popular belief that time in Norse mythology was seen as more of a cyclical construct rather than a linear. And we know that Oda has been very heavily influenced by Norse 
Norse mythology and Viking culture in the creation of Elbaf. So I was thinking maybe he incorporated that element into this threat. And that would mean that the Straw Hats may find themselves in some sort of time loop. But I do have to say, I think this is quite convoluted. And also quite possibly very difficult to substantiate. For example, again, if we take Mother Carmel as our test subject, if we try to apply this non-linear time to her, it doesn't seem to quite fit. I would say that time seemed to have moved in a pretty linear fashion, in a pretty straightforward manner when we see Mother Carmel's trajectory. You know, she was younger when she first arrived at Elbaf, when she first became friends with the giants. Time passed, decades, 37 years passed, and by that point, she was an old maid. Also, time being cyclical in Norse mythology, that's actually a pretty controversial debate, or at least somewhat controversial as far as I understand it. It seems that according to original sources, this hasn't been proven, this isn't actually the case, and most historians, most academics who study Norse mythology actually believe that time does move in a linear fashion. There is a little bit more complexity to how time seems to work or how it has been understood according to traditional Norse beliefs, but it's not non-linear or cyclical by any means. And I have actually spent an entire video discussing Norse mythology, so you may want to check that out. Also, if you are interested in the idea of time being cyclical in One Piece more generally, I also have some ideas about that too, so go check that theory out. But for the purposes of this mystery, I'm gonna rule it out. In saying that, time itself, I still think, is very, very important. But how about we take a step back and we simplify it somewhat? What if the problem is, is that time is relative? What if the problem is, is that you simply get stuck following the rhythm, following the pace, following the time that giants live by? And what I mean by this is that time still moves in a linear fashion, in a straightforward manner, but time still does become relative. Time becomes relative in the sense that one day, one hour, one minute for a giant means something vastly different for a human. We know that giants live for much longer than humans do, or any other species to the best of our knowledge so far, because Dory and Rogi, despite the fact that they are 160 years old, still seem like they are very much in their primes. Harudin, at over 80 years old, he's still being called a youngin. And so I guess in that sense, when you live for that long, when you live to get to that age, it's natural that time moves at a very different speed for you, and it means something very different for a giant than it means for a human. For a giant, a day in the scientific sense may feel more like an hour. And I guess that's why Dory and Brogi can just nonchalantly abandon their crew for a hundred years, dedicating a hundred years of their lives to just squabble and fight amongst each other. I mean, sure, a hundred years even for them isn't an insubstantial amount of time, but it's not their whole life as it would be for a human. If Zoro and Sanji decided to fight for a hundred years today, they would probably die before they made it to that hundredth year. And so then, in that sense, the danger is, is that if explorers, non-giant human explorers, if they arrive at Elbaf, if they meet giants, start interacting with giants, and follow their pace of life, then there's a big risk that they could jump on and adopt the giant time mentality. And the risk is that they might start spending a whole lot longer on tasks than they should. They start exploring things, start adventuring for way longer than they're meant to. They might find that in the blink of an eye that they have aged much more than they realized. It's sort of like how in the blink of an eye it is already December, 2024 is almost over, and speaking of which, speaking of this festive season, I'm going to ask that you give me the gift of your subscription and in return I'll give you the gift of more One Piece discussions. I'm on a goal to reach 100,000 subscribers and I'd really appreciate your help and this will also mean the faster I get there, the faster I stop interrupting our discussions with these requests. So let's go back to this idea because if we start to unpack it, explore it a little further, it seems that there may have actually been hints for this idea in the very same chapter. In fact, at the very beginning of chapter 1132, when Colin, the kid-friendly giant, he exclaims that the warrior giants have returned but they're not stopping by at the bar for a drink. And the barkeep comments that this is wise, this is smart because once those giants start drinking, they could drink for three days straight. And as enjoyable, as funny as that may sound, that could actually have been a major hit. Because can you imagine 
what that actually means for regular humans? Let's actually just do quick maths here. Yarul, who is still alive and kicking, I think the oldest known being aside from Zunesha, I guess if you don't count Gorosei and Imu because we don't really know what that situation is, Yarul is over 400 years old and it seems like he's still doing pretty well. So then if we say that giants can live up to over 400 years old, and for argument's sake, if we say that the average human life expectancy in the world of One Piece, I would probably say it's actually quite similar to the average human life expectancy in our real life, which is 73. And I think that seems fair. I mean, we do have certain characters like Dr. Kureha, who is still thriving despite being over 140 years old. But when you start to factor in the volatility and the nature, the brutal nature of the One Piece world, that will probably average out, even out, and I would say 70 to 80, that seems to be the sweet spot. And I guess in that sense, you would say that the average life expectancy of a giant is roughly six, six to seven times that of an average human, which would then mean three days for giants to just spend drinking. That's roughly equivalent to half a day for a human to spend drinking, which is still quite heavy drinking, I would say. But I guess it's much more reasonable when you consider the sheer size of the giants and I guess also their culture. But can you imagine if a human tried to drink for three days straight? I would be genuinely worried that they would be suffering from alcohol poisoning, severe alcohol poisoning. Not to mention that when you consider the Straw Hats track record, three days, that's a lot of time. We rarely see the Straw Hats spend a long time on any one given island, with the exception of the time skip where the Straw Hats separately and individually spent two years on their own islands, I don't think we've ever seen a case where the Straw Hats spend more than a couple weeks on an island. I guess Wano might have been the longest. In fact, by the Straw Hat standards, in the span of three days, you could arrive at a new island, team of genius scientists, watch by in horror as one by one those scientists get killed off, uncover a betrayal in the highest order, run into old enemies, in fact, run into multiple sets of old enemies, awaken an ancient sentient robot, run into old friends, incur the wrath of the highest known authoritative beings in the One Piece universe, save a child, and so on and so forth. I think you get my point. There are some arcs where in series, the Straw Hats has actually spent less than three days. So then say that the Straw Hats just find themselves adopting the giant way of life, getting on their time frame, getting on their way of scheduling. That could be a really big problem when you consider what's going on in the outside world. I mean, Luffy is going to become the king of the pirates and he's got to bring about a new dawn for the world. He doesn't have time to be spending weeks just partying with abandon. And there may have actually even been prior proof that supports this idea. In chapter 1076, we see Shanks ready himself to leave Elbaf. And as he does so, he makes a comment that he's spent too much time catching up with old friends. Now that dialogue upon first glance seems pretty harmless enough. But now, now after chapter 1132, I'm sure I'm not the only one thinking that this may have been potentially a little hint that Shanks is also saying that he found himself living and getting on the giant time. He got caught up on the giant way of life, on the giant pace. Who knows, maybe he spent three days drinking with Dorian Broggy. And if you think about it that way, it's possible that's why Louis Arnott's message in 1132 is phrased the specific way that it is. So this is something that I actually found very interesting because chapter 1132 and Louis Arnold's message in particular is a case where the official and the unofficial translations vary quite a bit and I think there is quite a lot of nuance in each translation. So in the official Viz translation of Louis Arnold's message, his warning sounds much more ominous. He warns us, do not overstay your welcome. Whereas if you compare that to the unofficial translation, or at least the one that I read, the quote was simply, do not linger there for too long. And I don't know about you, maybe it's semantics, maybe I'm just reading way too much into things, but for me, I do feel like there's quite a big difference in nuance there. The feeling I get from the Viz translation, the official version, is that the inhabitants of Elbaf, or perhaps the island itself, it actively does not want visitors to spend too long. It feels much more ominous, much more threatening. At some point, the island's good graces will expire and you're gonna be in trouble. That's the feeling I get. Whereas if you read
read the unofficial translation. Yes, there is still this threat and there is a sense of danger, but it seems much more passive. But even more interesting is the difference, the nuance in the two translations in the lead up to that final warning. So according to the unofficial translation, Arnott acknowledges that for those who seek adventure, I concede it would be a great shame to turn away from the marvelous land. Whereas according to Viz, the official translation, Arnott advises, adventurers, do not regret your lost time here. And again, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I think the difference between these two translations is quite significant. If you follow the unofficial translation, for me, this feels as if Arnott is acknowledging that it would be a shame not to explore Elbaf, especially for those who are interested in adventure. However, you should resist if you can, and at the very least, at least remember to not stay too long. Now compare that to the official translation. The, the feeling, the interpretation I take away is that Arnott seems to actually be actively encouraging explorers to go forth and adventure. Go forth, adventure, do not regret your time spent here, but a caveat, just don't lose track of time. Make sure you are exploring and adventuring on a strict schedule. He's saying don't think of your time spent here as being wasted, but also be careful so that you actually don't waste time, that you don't spend too long here. Make sure you don't spend so long that you will regret how much time you've spent here. That's the feeling I get. And in this way, I think this official translation, this really does fit that same idea, that same sense that if you're not careful, you might find yourself swept along, getting carried away and living on a giant schedule, living according to the giant pace of life. And so I guess I should make a timely reminder for everyone to always read the official version of the chapters. I think it's actually great to read as many translations as you can because you pick up a lot of the nuances and I think it helps you pick up some of the details that could get lost along the way. But because we have tested out all the other theories against Mother Carmel, I think it's only fair that we apply it to this theory as well. And I'd have to say that it just so happens that I think there's a reason why Mother Carmel wasn't too much at risk with this sense of danger. What I mean by this is that I think Mother Carmel didn't overstay her welcome here and I don't think that she was really at a risk of getting swept along and getting carried away with the giant way of life. And that's because Mother Carmel wasn't on Elba for exploration purposes. She wasn't here just living amongst the giants, adventuring like the Straw Hats would be, exploring and experiencing the magical wonders of Elbaf. Mother Carmel set up her operations here because she had a specific goal in mind. She had a specific mission. She knew that she had to churn out as many child soldiers as she could. She was on a very strict schedule of selling a child to the world government every two years, meaning that losing track of time, wasting time, if you will, that wasn't too much of a problem for her. Whereas, I do wonder who would have actually fallen victim to this issue in the past. Because aside from the tension that this has been introduced to create for the Straw Hats, it's probably also likely that this danger is going to be explained as having been a problem for others in the past. You know, maybe we're going to find out that the Roger Pirates, for example, spent way too long at Elbaf. You know, maybe that was detrimental to their overall journey of reaching Laugh Tale. You know, maybe it even meant that Roger, his illness progressed without him realizing. Too much time had passed with him just exploring exploring Elbaf, forgetting that he actually needs to seek treatment. You know, maybe Joy Boy himself became affected. Maybe he spent too long at Elbaf, just partying and exploring and hanging out with the giants whilst the war, the Void Century War, raged on in the outside world. Or maybe it's actually going to concern the mysterious silhouette that we have still yet to meet. Maybe there's a reason why this mystery silhouette has again reappeared at the end of the same chapter, chapter 1132, and it's connected to the reason of why you can't stay too long at Elbaf. But as always, I'm going to have to ask, what do you think? What do you think is the danger of overstaying your welcome at Elbaf? Let me know by leaving a comment below. If you've enjoyed today's discussion, make sure to like and share the video. Please also do subscribe. Again, I would really, really appreciate it. You can also help support the channel further by becoming an executive officer like these lovely, lovely people. But thank you as always for listening to another one of my ramblings. This is your Girl, and I'll see you again soon.